So talking about my art, I think, mm-hmm. and maybe some other things. <laughs> We're meeting here at the Biscuit Factory in Reading, which is a wonderful location. Um, and I've, I set up a, an art group maybe, I think, eight or nine years ago. We initially met at Hobbycraft, but we've moved here to the Biscuit Factory. We've been meeting here for over two years. So you may be able to just hear them in the background. They're just gathering this morning. Um, and it's a very loose group. Uh, there's no teaching or anything. People just come, do their own projects, uh, drink coffee, eat cake and chat, and it's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, so how I got started was people often ask how long have I been painting and drawing? And the answer is uh, forever, really, because my dad was an artist and he was a graphic designer by trade, but he loved painting and drawing as a hobby. So I've always sort of been surrounded by paint and pencils and so on and so forth. Um, And he loved drawing buildings and I loved buildings. And we used to go on um, like drawing expeditions when I was a teenager. So I've got great memories of going out and drawing the buildings where we were. Um, And then I decided that actually there wasn't a great deal of money involved in art and decided that I needed a sort of proper career. So believe it or not, I went off and trained as a chartered accountant. So I spent my working life um, working in different firms and companies doing accountancy work and then uh, training people in how to use really complicated IT systems. And then I guess about seven, eight years ago, I finally thought, right, now's the time. I've really got to, you know, while I've got my health and energy, I've just got to stop this accountancy stuff and really not enjoying it. So I left my job. I went on a course, uh, a summer school course to learn how to make handmade books. And it was terrible and the teacher was awful. And he was teaching by embarrassing and humiliating the students. And I, yeah, I thought this is a really terrible way. I thought I can do better than this. I, I, knew, I found out this chap was retiring. It was his last year of teaching this summer school. And the organizer came around and I said, oh, would you like me to teach this next year? And she said, yes. So I had a um, terrifying year of just trying to get my act together and sort out the samples and sort out the course and the teaching. So the following summer school, I did teach it, and I absolutely loved it, and just haven't looked back. So I I teach masses of courses now. Um, Then COVID came. I just spent an awful lot more time walking around and looking at the buildings and looking up at the first floors and thinking, oh, actually, these are quite interesting. So I started uh, painting the buildings just in Caversham, which is just maybe half a mile from my house, less than that. Um, And the first one was actually the nationwide and age concern building. And you know, it was fine, I was pretty pleased with it. And I put it on social media and it got picked up by the local newspaper, the Caversham Bridge. And there was a campaign at the time to try and stop the Nationwide from closing down. And they asked me if they, if they could use that picture as part of their campaign to stop it getting closed down. So there it was, it appeared on the front page of this local newspaper, it was terribly exciting. Unfortunately, the campaign wasn't successful and it, it did close down. But I suddenly had this idea of, well, actually, I could draw more of the buildings around Caversham, and perhaps we could do a monthly um, article in the newspaper. So a colleague uh, got hooked up with a colleague who does the the research and the writing. So now we have this uh, monthly feature in the Caversham Bridge newspaper. So it's a bit of the history of the building, some anecdotal stuff and current information, and then my, my picture. So we've been doing that for, well, since the start of COVID. So what's that? two and a half years, something like that. And it's quite a good drum beat, so it means I have to do a new one every month or so. And then people started contacting me, contacting me asking for commission paintings of their houses. And that's really taken off, so I've done quite a few of those as well. It's been pretty successful. And after about a year or so of the articles appearing in the paper, I suddenly thought, well, these would actually work quite well in a book. So I had a look at what I, what I had done, and there was, there was quite a few, there was 20 or so completed. And I thought, um, well, how can I put this together into a book? And I, I created this huge map of Caversham and plotted out all the drawings I'd done. And because of COVID and not going very far, they were actually in quite a tight geographical area. So I thought, actually, the way to structure this book would be a stroll through Caversham, so a physical walk. So once I'd mapped that out, I could see which ones fitted in, some were a bit further afield, so we kind of ditched those. 
and I had um, the same colleague helping with the write-ups and a couple of friends and actually started pulling in lots of people so I ended up with a designer, a proofreader, uh, we had a historian read it just to make sure there was nothing dread dreadful in there and he did pick up a couple of huge mistakes um, but we pulled it together really quite quickly um, and it came out last September so just over a year ago so I'm really pleased with how that's come out. So when I started painting the buildings around um, Caversham, something very peculiar happened. So the very first, the, the three first uh, businesses that I painted all closed down. So I thought, oh my goodness, this is dreadful. And I thought, actually, no, here's a great opportunity. So I could start a protection racket whereby people actually pay me in order for me not to paint their houses and their businesses. <laughs> So I, I started um, the online teaching working in collaboration with another tutor. So we basically teach alternate weeks and it's sketchbooking and travel journaling and that sort of thing. So obviously we have to meet to uh, coordinate things. And the first time we met, we met at her, her house and there was a lot of chatting and a lot of eating of cake and stuff and a little bit of art and a little bit of planning. And about halfway through the day, I don't know if you're going to be able to include this, but halfway through the day, there was all this music coming from next door, uh, from the garden. So we went upstairs into the bathroom to have a look out, and they were conducting an actual funeral in the next door garden, like a proper full-on burial in the garden, right up against the fence next to my friend's garden, so right next to her house. And they built this massive wooden enclave with wrought iron gates and they brought the coffin in and they buried it and they had um, a, a ceremony, a full-on ceremony. And was oh, like, well, <laughs> I imagine they got permission. The f a couple of months later we were doing another course and again we had to have a meeting to plan it and this time we decided to have the meeting on Zoom and so it was due to start at 10 o'clock and at I think 5 to 10 there's this hammering on my front door Thought, oh my goodness so I opened the front door and so my next door neighbours said was on the doorstep and he said the baby's coming can you get us to the hospital now so what <laughs> so I had to contact Karen my colleague and tell, just say I can't make it and literally had to drive this woman to the hospital so we're a little bit worried because we're planning a third course this this year and so far we've had a, a death and a birth, so we're a little bit worried as to what might happen the next time we agree to meet. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Watch this space. Well, it's quite tricky when art is your, your business, your way of life. So you've got always this idea of the commercial side. And I think, so you've almost got art for work and then art for fun. So in a way, it's back to my dad, because he was a graphic designer by trade, and then he painted and drew for fun. So now I do really the, the pen and watercolour paintings to sell and I teach and that's all you know it's a way of earning money but my fun stuff is the, the wild and wacky abstract acrylic paints and just slushing paint around so that's quite fun <laughs> quite fun to do very different but my other big passion which I do need to mention because anybody that knows me will be thinking she hasn't mentioned it yet is water skiing completely different very physical absolutely love it. Um, I started mid-twenties, which is quite old really, and I thought over the years I'd get less obsessed, but I've actually got more and more and more obsessed as the years go by. And I ski in the UK, it's flipping freezing, um, eight months of the year, so March through to October, and then the off season, so the winter months, just do masses and masses of gym work. But I love water skiing, and we've travelled the world you know, we've, we've skied all over the world. We've been to Australia, New Zealand, all across Europe, all across the UK, water skiing for fun and competitions. Um, keeps me fit. Um, and it's just, I don't know what it is, some kind of drug, I think. You can't not do it. So we're now January, and I'm counting down the weeks before I can start, so maybe eight weeks before I can start. And I'm so looking forward to getting back out on the water.
Yeah, so just thinking back to my dad, because he was my kind of first inspiration and biggest supporter to start with. And he was a typographer and absolutely brilliant at lettering. So even now, after all these years, if I've got a picture that I'm painting that's got lettering in, I'll go and have a look and see how he's done it. So, uh, so it's still a, a good inspiration. And when he died, I inherited his art materials and I'm still using some of his watercolour paints uh, that he left. So they're all dried and hard, but it, they, they work fine. So it's really lovely when I get those out and I use those. This one specifically, is one of my dad's tubes of paint, so that's at least, well I've had it 20 years and he probably had it for another 10. So very old, but it works fine. And sadly he died, um, well, 20 years ago now, so he's, he missed completely the fact that I left my job and now I do art full time. He would have been absolutely delighted. Um, in fact, I remember when I announced I was going to become an accountant, like most parents would be pretty pleased about that. He was absolutely horrified <laughs> that I was going off to do such a sensible job. But he was very proud of us and he would have been so proud of the book and the drawings and the paintings and everything else. 